One of the reasons why practitioners consult the SARS material so often is, in addition to the guidance, it also contains illustrative letters. Now, can we look forward to that feature with SARS number 19? Yes, there's uh, example engagement letters. There's example, um, or there is an example rep letter. Um, and we have uh, uh, example reports uh, in SARS-19. Um, if I can just add an addendum to that for a second, Becky. Uh, one of the issues with rep letters uh, is the ongoing uh, emphasis that rep letters be tailored to meet the needs of the client. Uh, I mention that because uh, when you look at some peer review observations, you frequently see a comment that says that the rep letters don't include specific characteristics of the uh, client and that the rep letter looks to a large extent to be a very generic document. Um, in order for these to be meaningful, uh, rep letters are theoretically written by the client. Now we know in practice that doesn't usually happen, but accounting firms in writing uh, rep letters on behalf of their client need to incorporate uh, specific uh, characteristics of that client in those rep letters. For example, naming the related parties, for example, identifying debt agreements, for example, uh, the application of new accounting standards, uh, for example, uh, if there might be new regulatory issues they have to deal with. Um, they should be in the representation letter making it clear that this representation letter is, is directly associated with this client as opposed to being simply a generic representation letter. And SARS-19 uh, continues to emphasize the importance of having to tailor rep letters uh, on behalf of individual clients.